Well, it's a vice grip for pliers, and pliers for a wrench, a wrench for a hammer, hammers everything else. It just don't seem to make much difference. I sure do like him, but he's hard on equipment. You have been very busy while I have been bringing home the <laughs> Satan. <laughs> Well, by fixing up our worn winch system, you wanted to put an in cab switch in. Yeah, we put an in cab switch in, so that will show you that it's uh, something we wanted to do. Good thing to have. I was just thinking about winches. This was originally a worn 9.5 XP. We've put a big bow motor on it, and that's improved it a lot. And uh, now we're actually going to make another. We, and we, overhaul the whole gear system. We, we, yeah, well. Obviously, maintaining it's um, the reason I was thinking about it. I was looking at Andrew and Pierre White said the other day about how he bolted a winch to the front of his truck as an insurance policy. But really, it's just a decoration. I well, I don't think that's probably the right way to approach a winch because you can't really just bolt one on the front and think, okay, I've got a winch on the front in case the day comes eight years down the track when I might need it, because guaranteed. When you do do that, it'll let you down. Well, okay, hopefully it won't, but Chances they. Are, if it's been sitting out in the sun and then going through rivers and doing all that sort of stuff, it's probably going to fail. Well, you need, I think that you need to pull your winch apart and reassemble it, re grease it, inspect it, and run it, especially at least once a year, and probably run it probably <laughs> under load maybe once a month. Especially like before you go on a big trip, like we're about to. But the whole point of this is that when we're in Tassie, you were saying, wouldn't it be great if we had an in-cab switch? Rather than having to come out here we and, and attach the uh, controller onto the front of the truck, you thought, wouldn't it be cool? And there has to be a way well, of putting an in-cab switch in. Because I also noticed that the, uh, the little plug here, the contacts in here are starting to go a bit green from a little bit of corrosion, and I thought maybe that could fail one day. So as well as that, an in-cab switch will give us a redundancy there if that... Clouds. You can use both. I wanted to be able to make it so you could use the controller if you need to winch externally, or you can winch from inside the cab using an inbuilt control. So we've done that. We've wired it up. Gotcha. I'll explain how that all works. It took him quite a long time well, to figure this out, but being my head his brilliant engineer mind, <laughs> we figured it out. But now you're going to explain to me and viewers. Well, no, I am because did I didn't actually find very much information about this. There is various stuff out there. I, I struggled to find. Um, too much stuff so we'll be able to explain for anyone else who wants to do it how you wire up a five pin controller uh, into and what the wires do and how the uh, those seven pin rocker switches work uh, the winch continues to evolve it's still basically the same old one it's the same drum and the same planetary gear set but it's everything like else is pretty much Supercharged. Everything mm -hmm. else is, uh, but I suppose that's the beauty of a good quality winch like Warren. You know, you can you can do this with it. You know, you can keep. You can improve it. And build and and replacing parts as they die. We've, uh, we've probably spent more on it than we really should, but you know that's. Uh, that's the case with everything in the arts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but as far as yeah, we'll, we'll, it's a little bit of trial and error. I think we'll work it so out. It's a bit more complicated. Than if we see sparks, we know we we got live, and if we don't, we're. Uh, Right, should be all right. Morning. Have a look in there. That's the original worn solenoid. So they're wired uh, in pairs. So one pair is for winch out, and one is for winch in. These are nine and a half XPs. Have this extra. This is a. That's your standard solenoid. This is the, uh, actually a bigger one. I think it's a six two eight nine one or something like that. So to wire the end cab switch, what I had to do, you might be able to see here. I used a four pin or four uh, lead trailer wire. This is just normal trailer wire, which is, has got a connector there in case I want to get it off again. And uh, to do the wiring, I basically had to tap into each of these um, yeah, solenoids so. to, to, to tap the uh, um, various... Uh, so I f it took me a while to figure this out, but if anyone's interested, yeah, and this is only for these worn winches I don't know I can't speak for any others that's your original connector up there well, what my challenge so wait, so here was is the, this is the original connector is it correct that one there yep and that originally went it where just into just fed this into, is here. into the so this packs. comes from on the bottom of my pack and goes up to here obviously yeah with your five pins yeah so then you obviously tapped off from this side yeah 
from that side and then put your well i just i'm just I, essentially what i did was i had to run another one of these yeah sure and that's this and that's that and then that runs i guess also out is. here and it runs into the cab to the switch but the challenge was working out what all these wires do yeah for, for sure that was the challenge and how it's configured so i can just briefly show you now this brown wire now i know this is pretty standard across a lot of worn so this might be applicable to a lot of people if, if interested in doing this yep the brown wire is actually earth for the solenoids right uh-huh so it's a common earth for all the solenoids the black wire is an earth for the switch the red wire is the power wire which connects directly to the power wire that feeds directly off your battery or directly onto this terminal here in the solenoid pack this one here yep and the green and white are in and out respectively i can't remember which is which one is winch in one is so one's power out power in So here it is here. So it's a bit hard to tell because it's got poo all over it, but there's that green switch. So that was, what do we say, winch out or winch in, whatever. That's the white one, the other way. That's that common earth for the solenoids. And you can see And the then two these power. are the power wires. We ran two, I can't remember why. You don't really need two, but we just well, did. Maybe because we had a two. Anyway, we ran two, but yeah. you don't need to run two. Well, if you want to set up a remote switch, what you'll have to do is duplicate all these wires. You'll need to run into your switch, and I'll show you how to do it. You'll have to run a brown wire tapped off one of your solenoid pack earths. You'll have to run another cable to ground here. You'll have to tap off your power, and you winch in, winch out, or power in, power out. So that's constant power, that's power in, power out, when the solenoid is activated, mm -hmm. so to speak. So... You'll have to tap each one of those wires and run them into the cab. And, well, actually, you don't need to tap the earth. You can just earth it in the cab somewhere. But you, what was the big problem that you ran into? You ran into a problem with the earthing. And what was that? Just figuring out how it all worked. I, I, Didn't you say that you needed to earth it both at the switch and at the solenoid? Yeah. Because, Is that right? And that was, what, that was your biggest problem. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I'd have to pull this all apart to show you, but maybe we could. Hello. Hmm. All right, Imagine. genius. Mm -hmm. How do people at home wire up an in-cab switch? Uh, well, we've got, we've got a seven-pin rocker switch. This is actually designed as a winch one, but you can get just normal seven-pin. You want a rocker switch, a momentary rocker, like so when you press it, it's momentary. And um, this is how it works. So obviously this was a bit of a challenge for me because I bought this switch on eBay and I didn't get any instructions about how it works or which pins are which. When you, you might remember that there is a common earth that runs at common earth for the solenoids or for the contactor pack. And what you need to do with that, common earth basically works on the opposite side of each of your switches. So we've actually got running from the common earth and these are parallel together bridging across there like that and and on the opposite side of those is your winch in which is the green wire i think mm -hmm. and winch out which is that white wire so basically winch in goes to oh, well, let's try and get orientated about how the switch is winch in so there's your switch winch in winch out goes to there on your switch if you can imagine that so that's your green wire looks like yeah, and winch out down there to the uh, underneath it there. Mm -hmm. So the switch earth is opposite the switch main power feed, which mm -hmm. makes sense, right? Yeah. And in addition to that, we have also added a safety um, guarded switch. So that needs to be on. So that's pretty simple because all you're really going to do there, there's, as I said, your main power feed before you get it runs into this main power feed into the switch. You want it to run through this rocker, this guarded switch first. And in addition, if you want to be really fancy, which we did, again, a light to indicate when it's on. And 
you just need to run all of these two things just need to be run in series to your power feed wire to your switch maybe let me just sum up in brief um, main power in winch out winch in common earth for the solenoid common earth for the solenoid earth for the switch when you're looking at this sort of f1 f2 a that middle one is essentially a which is the main power and then these are f1 and f2 if that makes sense and that's just run um straight in through there and then comes through here and through the firewall here um which you know you can say that really quickly but it's probably going to be the most annoying part to do because it's fiddly and annoying um and uh and then obviously into the cab itself so we've just uh yeah earthed it on a common thing this was actually the where this is the, the line for the um bonnet switch up and then they just earth there and it just sits there with yeah. a nice little device that jade's made up my um, mate my shady mate pete made that and it works quite well yeah it's cool so that's it that's how you wire up the in cab switch yeah that's how it's done See this, Katie, Katie, Katie. What's that, Jay, Jay, Jay? That it's a good solid mechanical connection as well, you know. Yeah, of course, I give, give it a bit I of a tug. Give it, give it a tug. And make sure it's. Oh, let's give it a bit of a tug too, Kate. That's hilarious, Jay. That's very clever. How did you come up with something so clever? <laughs> Probably the only thing else we could do to this winch now would be to fit a plasma rope. You know, set it. Well, I hope that has been uh, helpful for anybody who wants to put an in cab switch in their vehicle. Um, we found it a really excellent modification. We thought we'd put this out because, um, you know, having an in cab switch for a winch is a really, really, really good idea. Now, of course, winches are aftermarket accessories that we bolt onto the front of our vehicles. Like, to my knowledge, I don't have any four wheel drive that comes out of the factory with a winch. To generally have a, a, a remote control, like whether that be a cord or, a, you know, a remote control, like, but, but the, the ideal situation is to have a hardwired in-cab switch. If you're interested in doing that, well, hopefully this video gives you a pretty good idea of how to go about that. But it is the best way to operate your winch. Nine, 99 times out of 100, you're going to want to be winching from in the cab. You know what I mean? And you can coordinate your driving if you're going to drive to assist the winch with the winch switch, you know? It's just, it's just so much better. If there's anything that isn't clear, anything we've missed out, then um, we'd love to respond to your questions. You can message us on here or through Facebook, Instagram, or on our blog, www.thewhiteox.com. We'd love to hear from you. Um, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more winch videos and videos of our travels around Australia. Thanks for watching. Slap you later.